So we're here with Science and Fiction, Rick and Steve. Now, we want to know how this band started. Uh, the band started about a year ago. I was putting together a personal recording studio and started writing some songs and was trying out uh, a bunch of singers. I had about three songs done when I had found Rick and uh, gave him the song the instrumentals and he uh, put some vocals on there and just sounded perfect for what I was doing. I was playing stuff like James Taylor and Cat Stevens, like stuff that was anti-rock. <laughs> in no way would it contextually say anything to do with what we play as a band. And his sister just comes up to me, hey, my brother, you know, is looking for a singer. His stuff is really good. You should check it out. And I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, she knew I was like struggling for singers though. And just, I don't know, just looking but, out yeah. for anybody, you know? <laughs> but then the, the strange thing was I, I heard the stuff and I loved what he was doing. I totally got it right away. And uh, and I thought that he was just a great guy and I wanted to, to help out and be involved. And then, then it just it yeah, started to work yeah. pretty and easily. Using his stuff, I mean, I, I started tailoring some of the songs to, to fit his voice. And then I actually got our studio, upgraded my studio. And he came in here, started helping with the songwriting. And he's such an awesome musician. He just clicked really well. and. Just, Pumped out song after song until we have what we have now. Pumped out, pumped out, pumped, songs. pumped out the songs. Yeah. We did. We pumped them out. You guys like meet at the library. What's the deal with the name? You know, science and fiction. <laughs> with how did that come about? That's the name we wanted. We couldn't get. That's uh, why. We're we're really into uh, alternative comedy show called Mr. Show, and we wanted uh, to originally call the band Blow Up the Moon, but that was taken in the name. So unfortunately, we science and fiction. You know, just, I'm really into like nerdy science fiction, Star Wars, and Star Trek, the same. We, just, we took that concept and also the duality between this whole anti-pop culture type thing with the blow up the moon and the you know some of the contradictions that that we have. So science and fiction, which are two totally separate entities, you know, clashing with each other. Science and facts and fiction, is the fake and unfactual type thing. So. So when you were talking about just science coming from the very fact-based, very. Uh empirically mechanical place you know maybe I saw it in, in it coming from a different place and I think I think that the lyrics reflect that in a lot of ways on the album <laughs> dude I'm getting like a whole lesson here you know with the contradictions that you're talking about now that's the name of the CD is there any more um, any more uh, theology that you have throughout the CD but I mean it's 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 and it's you know what we're, I might be misrepresented it's not like it's it's overly intellectual or it takes itself too seriously either I mean it's it's just you know it's rock so it's supposed to be fun, but the thing is, it's not fluff. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully, there's there's something that someone can have a, a thought attached to, as well as just grooving to it, enjoying it. And musically, I think uh, every song has its own personality too. You know, uh, I have a lot of influence, and when I write the music, I tend to write songs that sound a little, you know, new metalish, or something that sound a little more pop, and you know, just a broad spectrum. But I think you know, Rick's lyrics bring it all together into a cohesive whole sound and sound, uh, a unique band. Me and Rick both have a rec home recording studio and actually we're sitting in my recording studio right now. Uh, we use modern technology to help create the album, just recording with Pro Tools, giving him a jump drive stick to his house and he did his vocals on it. And we laid down tracks and vice versa. There's a couple songs that I brought over here with, with all the drum mm -hmm. tracks done and redid the guitars yeah, here. We did all the producing, editing, mixing, mastering ourselves. Uh, to put out the CD, and so we really got to take a lot of extra time and just you know massage the songs to do exactly how we want them. Massage the songs. <laughs> no, part of the greatest thing though is I think just even beyond what we did is for for independent musicians to realize what an incredible era we're living in. You know, you really do have all the tools you need to to make your creativity come to life. You know, you can make a quality recording. As long as you can put something quality in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and do it yourself. You know, we're not living in a situation where you have to worry about having management to get anything done, where you have to have a record label to be able to record or release anything decent, you know. And that's something that I think is just beautiful across the board. Anybody that wants to be involved in expressing themselves really has the, the, the platform available to them, you know. But where can they um, find your music right now? Well, you can hop on to our, our MySpace, and we have four or five tunes up there that are that are pretty much in, in their final condition. So if you just go to myspace.com slash science and fiction. We'll have it up on iTunes, Napster, and Rhapsody and Amazon. See, when we 69, it's actually me and the nipple. <laughs> All the same height when they're laying down. <laughs> <laughs>